from Get Up Australia, and I was really just deeply, deeply moved by just so many facets of the ad. And I returned back to D.C., and I started to get a team together to uh, see what we can do about getting this on TV. I was not the only person who was really moved by this ad. There were obviously millions and millions of people around the world and in the United States that, that felt very strongly about this ad and put together a Facebook page, kind of wanted to see what support I could get. And in a matter of a few days and moving in a week, um, I had over a thousand people. So logistically, what has had to happen to get us to this point and what more still has to happen? Uh, luckily, I was able to uh, find, actually had two people reach out to me who are digital strategists, one based in D.C. and one based in New York, who are both taking on this project pro bono. And then uh, soon after that, we were able to locate a lawyer who has background in kind of this same nonprofit work, who's able to uh, consult with us and... Once we had that team assembled, the next big step was really working with GetUp to get the rights to the ad, which is obviously, if we're interested in fundraising, get this ad on television, is absolutely key. And it took a little longer than we expected, but uh, actually this past week, after about uh, two months of working with them and drawing up different legal agreements, we we finally... Uh, uh, formalize the agreement and we're, we're officially in partnership with them to uh, get this on television in the United States. And then what happens next? What comes next is we're trying to build as large of a coalition of, as possible with different organizations, different individuals that are interested in not just this ad, but really the message of the ad. Uh, we've already we've already raised uh, several thousand dollars with very little promotion and we're, we're looking to have that, that number exponentially increase as we, uh, as we get the word out to more people. How can people help make that happen? Um, I think the best thing that they could do is, one, to go to our Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash it's time equality. They could become a fan. They could follow us on Twitter. And most importantly, they can donate through our Facebook application. Has there been any research into how the ad performed in Australia? And is there going to be any tracking of how it performs in the U.S.? Yeah, so in Australia, um, the ad was actually intended, um, yes, for voters, but it was actually intended for um, Australia's Labour Party. They were meeting in a conference, and the purpose of this ad was to get the Labour Party to endorse marriage equality, which they had never done before. And it was successful in doing that. Um, there's a think tank in D.C. called Third Way that conducted uh, some very preliminary study. And they found that this ad uh, tested very well in the United States. This ad emphasizes love and commitment over rights and benefits, which is something that they identified and which is really one of the main differences between, I think, what a lot of straight couples think marriage equality is about and what a lot of gay couples and their advocates understand what it's really about. It's not just about uh, legal protections, about legal benefits. It's about all of that, but it's first and foremost about the love and commitment. What is it about this one particular ad that's so special? It is able to um, really transcend the, the um, stigma that the viewer usually has about these types of ads, about this issue, and uh, really turn it into something effective. And I think that you know, illustrating this concept of commitment with no words. Again, there are no words in the entire ad and a really wonderful soundtrack. I'm a big fan of the music. I think that uh, that's really the reason it's been so successful. And that's really the reason I think that uh, 